You're listening to Bark and Wag's 15-Minute Vet Talk. Each week, your host, Polly Requa, interviews veterinarians and individuals in the pet industry from across the nation answering pet questions. Bark and Wag podcast is produced weekly for your enjoyment, and show notes can be found at BarkandWag.com under the podcast tab. That's B-A-R-K-N-W-A-G.com. Please remember to subscribe to Bark and Wag 15-Minute Vet Talk. Thank you for listening to Bark and Wag 15-Minute Vet Talk. Bark and Wag is dedicated to protecting our dogs through advocacy, education, and supporting like-minded dog lovers by selling custom pet products, saving lives by selling collars, scrunchies, and swag. Please check out Bark and Wag's website, BarkinWag.com. That's B-A-R-K-N-W-A-G.com to see the awesome merchandise. Bark and Wag collars and leashes, collar covers, and decorative bandanas are perfect for your pooch. For the owner of the house, we have t-shirts, sweatshirts, long sleeve shirts, hats, and even coasters. We are expanding monthly, so be sure to check back. We love pooch ideas for podcasts and merchandise too, so send an email to polly at barkinwag.com with your suggestions. Welcome to Bark and Wag 15-Minute Vet Talk. I'm your host, Polly Requa. Today we're talking to Steve, professional leadership trainer at the Dog House in Breckenridge. Welcome, Steve. Hey, thank you for having me back. Yes, thank you. So today we had a question from one of our listeners after the podcast that we did a few weeks ago on what do you, as a leadership trainer, how do you work with shy dogs? Okay, so shy dogs is generally a lot of times is an issue with the owner. You know, they adopt the dog from, say, the shelter and they want to give them this better life. So They have them on the bed. They have them, you know, they're carrying them around. If it's a small dog, um, they're basically being a helicopter parent to this dog. Um, A lot of times, you know, there are extenuating circumstances, but a lot of times it is the owner. So what we do in that is really bring out their confidence. If I was bringing a shy dog, say, into the group in daycare, I would bring them in and put them up higher than the other dogs. So we have platforms back there. I'd get everybody off those platforms, put them up there. If the dog is fearful of humans, obviously we want to use a lot of treats and gain their trust. We want the dog to be on a leash if it's a small dog and not just carrying it around. That's going to build confidence. And then we also want to make sure that we're a leader that that dog feels they can turn to in case there's issues. Um, You know, that way they have a positive you know, role model to look after, so to speak. And uh, do you get a lot of shy dogs? I do get quite a few, yes. Um, not so much up here in the mountains because they're they're generally bigger dogs, but we, you know, and, and a lot of your shyer dogs are abuse issues and whatnot, but I do see quite a few, at least, you know, one or two a week. And what's your definition of a shy dog? So, for example, which you've worked with in the past, Maddie, our black lab, when people, I've been taking her to the office, and when people come up to greet her, they put their hand down, and she kind of walks backwards a little and then goes forward. Is that considered shy? That would be, uh, you know, maybe a minor bit of, of shyness. Um, some dogs just really, they just don't want to interact with strangers. They love their pack and that's all they want to interact with. You know, really a, a clear definition of a shy dog would be the dog that is shaking, that's, you know, hiding behind its owner, urinating when approached, uh, little things like that. And, and we just really just build their confidence. Make sure that nothing negative happens to them when we're around them and don't feed into it. You know, perfect example, like up here, we have avalanche bombs from the mountains that go off when they're when ski patrol is bombing. You know, a lot of dogs are scared of that or lightning, Um, you know, lightning and thunder is a big one. So when your dog is shaking, when they hear these things, rather than going over and hugging them and reinforcing that behavior, just call them, you know, redirect and give them a treat. Have them come to you, have them sit and give them a treat. Don't react to the bomb, don't, you know, or the the thunder. Uh, And that's what a lot of people do. Their dog starts shaking and now they're like, oh, my God, you're going to be okay." Well, now you're raising the anxiety level of your dog. Oh, sure. Interesting. Huh. 
And uh, so do you have any tips for owners that do have shy dogs? So I'm sure going to doggy daycare and training helps boost confidence. But at home, what are some tips that you can give the listeners on working with a shy dog? You know, get them out, you know, get them a little bit out of their comfort zone briefly and, and increase the volume day by day. Um, so, you know, if your dog is scared of thunder, maybe turn on some thunder noises on your computer speakers for, you know, the first day, say 30 seconds, and then just keep increasing volume and, and don't react to it. Put them in, in those situations that they're scared of um, just minutely, you know, and, and increase with time. Make sure there's treats involved and make sure it's a pleasant experience. Uh, and, and pretty soon it just... They, they ignore it. You know, they, they learn to, numb. It, yeah, exactly. It just becomes, oh, I'm used to this. It's no big deal. Nothing negative happens and, and they move past it. So can you do that with a doorbell? <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's a tricky one because the door is always such a exciting place, you know, new people coming in pets and generally what do people do when they come in your house? Hey, puppy, how you doing? You know, they really escalate the excitement. So with the doorbell, you know, generally what I would do is train your dog to go to their bed when they hear the doorbell. Um, you know, as soon as the doorbell gets rang, you go put a treat on their bed and say, go to bed. Um, and, and you'll find that the dog will, because they have a task, they have a little job to do. Um, when the doorbell rings, they'll just go run over their bed and they're not going to bark as much. Obviously, you haven't trained a pug. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> there's no way it's, that would happen. It's, yeah, it is. And again, there's never a one size fits all. It's never black and white as with anything. Yeah, uh, sure. But, but yeah, that's, you know, there, there's so many different variables too that you can, you can do, but pugs, you know, pugs, chihuahuas, any little dogs are a little harder to break that of. Yeah. But if we're, if we're making it a habit to run to the door barking, they're going to continue doing it. I know, so. I know, I know. <laughs> yeah, so, obviously, uh, yeah, I would think you know firsthand. <laughs> right, exactly. I could put probably a wing on your uh, <laughs> business trying to train Chuck. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, thank you for being on the podcast, and we look forward to having you back. Excellent. Thank you so much, Polly. Okay, thank you. All right, bye-bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to Bark and Wag's 15-Minute Vet Talk. If you like what you just heard, we hope you'll pass along our web address, www.barkandwag.com, to your friends and other pet owners. Have a pressing question for a veterinarian? Ask your question at barkandwag.com under the podcast tab. This has been a KFR production. Join us next time for another edition of Bark and Wag's 15-Minute Vet Talk.